Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the Gold Forecaster Index, the holy grail to predict gold prices. Uh, in my last video I said that there could be a correction, but the trend in gold is going to be higher. That's what happened here in August. We had a small correction, but the trend is still going to go higher. Now if you look at silver, then actually silver went up in August. It went from here to here. So silver has done a little bit better than gold. And let's go over my gold and silver checklists. So this is the gold forecast index. We have a new data point and the data point is up. If you look at it on a large time frame, this is actually almost a new high we have four peaks here and this is one of the large peaks here so at each of these peaks you can see that gold will be going higher so i expect that we will see gold somewhere here at the end of the year but there are also other uh, Things that we need to look at. Eh? This is the most important one, the gold forecast index. But I have a lot of points here to discuss. The Taylor rule rate is still in negative territory here. But that's Q1. So we need to watch for Q2 numbers. I think this will rebound. Uh, and that would uh, confirm a higher gold price. Uh, misery index is a bit down but still up so that's also confirming a higher gold price real output is, is crashing in q2 so this will bring a lot of inflation in the future supply and demand uh, well we had news from peru and that's a bit concerning here because i see that peru copper production is going back up in july uh, on a longer time frame it looks like this so this could bring a lot of silver byproduct supply with it and we could see some pressure in the silver market due to this production increase uh, let's take a look at gold demand the gld trust has been going higher but now it's a bit flat so i think investors are not buying uh, investment gold anymore this is actually going a bit down now so this has been going down la lately and that's a bit of weakness in gold but um, i think the fundamentals are still uh, okay for higher gold prices sge withdrawals so china is actually starting to buy again so we had a bit of a down move here but in august we see that the trend is going higher. So Chinese are starting to buy. Let's hope that this trend goes uh, higher uh, later this year. Silver demand, when we look at the SLV stock level, it has been flat lately. So we don't see a huge investor increase in SLV anymore like this. Uh, we are now flat and going down a bit. So that's... Uh, a bit of a negative point uh, in china we see that uh, silver warehouse stock level is going higher um, let's take a look at central bank gold demand we had the new numbers here for june and we see that uh, india has been buying turkey has bought a lot of gold uh, almost 100 uh, tons and when you look at the total picture, then central banks have been buying gold, uh, opposed to the previous quarter. US mint sales have a peak here, but it has uh, been subdued again. So let's see if this trend continues higher. Premiums have been going down. This is one of my concerns here. The premiums are now for silver at 30%. I haven't updated this chart yet, but it's at 30%. And it's still above the historical level of uh, 20% here. 
but when this moves lower to 20% then we need to watch out we're not there yet uh, there's still some upside in silver but we need to watch this chart here Shanghai premiums have been the same at minus 2% which is not good so this needs to go higher so that the Chinese will start buying gold um, Appmex gold premiums are today at 5% and that's actually very good because that's still very high much higher than the historical price uh, premium of three percent PSLV premiums were were down a bit they are at minus two percent so that needs to go higher again it needs to go back to positive level the open interest for gold let's take a look it's very stable and it's actually starting to bottom out here probably uh, good for the gold price silver let's take a look at silver COT report is actually very positive if this goes down here then the silver price will go up uh, let's take a look at the managed money shorts so the silver swaps have have been going along here on a higher silver price here it's a bit lower here the, so more shorters are coming here but this is insignificant so the trend is still higher and this is actually a very good setup for higher silver prices for gold we have still a lot of shorts uh, on the net gold swaps so we need to see this move higher before we can see a bottom in gold uh, you can see also here that there are a lot of shorters uh, on the managed money short positions in gold so that could bring a short squeeze in gold higher for silver there's not a lot of shorting here so silver would stay flat and go up uh, marginally but I think there's a lot of chance that we will see a gold short squeeze soon let's take a look at background, the lease rates let's take a look at the lease rates lease rates didn't budge a lot for gold so probably gold will be flat and for silver we see that there's an inversion here so the two month rate is higher than the six and 12 month rate so this could be a nice setup for higher silver prices uh, let's take a, take a look at the gold futures we see that we are still having an arbitrage here uh, a spread between the gold futures and the physical and that typically means that gold will go higher can see the trend here each time when this is high the gold price will go up when this goes up it goes up and here we have this anomaly here which tells me that gold will go higher it's that simple the Swiss franc has been very positive here Swiss franc has been going up there's a blue line here so gold will go up seasonality we are now in September which is the most profitable month for gold and is also the most profitable month uh, for silver so this is uh, a perfect setup technicals um, yeah, the technicals are see a rising trend in uh, silver and probably it will move higher to 30 and for gold you can see the technicals here uh, a little bit of a consolidation here but it's probably moving higher and we have a bull flag here and you can see this upper trend line it has penetrated this upper trend line so probably now the consolidation is over and we will move to 2000 so that's for the gold checklist let's take a look at the economic indicators and 
most important one was the trade deficit of today. Look at this. The trade deficit has gone to 63 billion in July. So that's a huge increase. And typically when this happens, the dollar will crash. And that's what I'm, uh, I'm thinking here. The dollar will probably go to 80 uh, soon, as you look at this chart here. And when we take a look at the budget deficits, budget deficits are ballooning like crazy. And you can see that this is also correlated to the dollar. So I expect that the dollar will crash in the coming months based on these deficit numbers. Take a look at uh, money supply now. So the money supply has been going up in the last few months, but now it's uh, a bit flat. Still in a rising trend, so that's good for gold. But you can see that the base money has been going down. So the Fed has not been printing money at this point. Let's take a look at the central bank balance sheets. And then I will give you evidence that the Fed hasn't been printing here on its official balance sheet. Let's take a look here. So the ECB has actually stopped printing here and the Federal Reserve has decreased its balance sheet and now it's flat. So what we want to see here is that these balance sheets go back up. But I think they will be uh, printing money soon. I can't guarantee that, but I think so. Let's take a look at inflation numbers. So the University of Michigan here has an inflation expectation of 3%. Uh, that hasn't changed. And we can see that the CPI and the PPI, producer price index, are moving higher. I expect that inflation will go higher in the coming months. Let's take a look at capacity utilization. We have a V-shaped recovery here. Uh, PMI was also very good for the US, so I expect this to continue higher. And this is correlated with inflation. So a higher capacity utilization will bring higher inflation. This is a very important chart. This is the deficit to outlay ratio. So this has gone up to 62% in the second quarter. And what does this mean? This means that 62% of the spending, of government spending, is being funded by debt and deficits. This is uh, very high. Normally, if it goes above 40%, then you have hyperinflation, okay? But I think that uh, the budget deficit will come down a bit. It's only in the second quarter that uh, the government spent so much. So this will probably go down again below 40%, but it's still amazing that we have so many deficits uh, and 60% has been funded by debt. So this is also evidence that I will, that, that, that there will be inflation coming. Look at the debt as well. Look at this spike here. Debt has been going from 107% of GDP to 135% of GDP. When you go above a certain threshold, 140, 150%, you are going to go to hyperinflation. And that is, that is what's coming. Look at that debt. It's going higher and higher. Okay, central bank, we already talked about central bank gold holdings. Uh, another nice news here is that pension funds are starting to buy gold, 5%. So when you look at this, 
pension funds are 21% of uh, total assets in the world, 21%. And if they increase it to 5%, from 0 to 5%, that would mean that, that we have 5% uh, of 21%, and that's 1%. So gold will go up in allocation by 1%. And you can see here that we are only at 0.6%. If this goes to one uh, goes up 1%, that would double the demand in gold. So that would be uh, very good for the gold price. It will probably also double if every pension fund allocates 5% in gold. But this is just the start. Uh, let's see if the other pension funds will do the same. Um, Paleo copper production, we already talked about that. Okay, so I wanted to uh, finish this with uh, calculating the fair price. You think that gold is expensive at 2000? I don't think so. You need to take a look at the reserves. So central banks have gold reserves and today we stand at 1.3. 1.3 trillion in gold reserves. And when you look at the money supply, we are now at 22 trillion. So if you would take uh, a 20 to 40 percent backing of that money supply, then you would get 20 percent of 22 trillion would be 4 trillion. And gold would have to go from 1 trillion to 4 trillion. And that means a uh, multiple of three times. So that would mean that gold will go to somewhere around 5,000, 6,000. So we are absolutely not uh, at fair value yet in gold. Okay, so the last post here, Warren Buffett has bought Barry Gold. I think everyone knows that by now. You can see here that he bought this very gold. Uh, value change is 20 million. And the value is 500 million that he bought here. So that's not a lot uh, compared to the whole portfolio. But yeah, if he buys gold, then you need to uh, watch it. So that's uh, our summary here. Gold will be going higher on higher deficits, higher debt, and higher inflation. And I'll see you in the next video.